Hello, it's Rhonda Thomas, and we're getting ready to do managerial accounting's exam two review. This is where we do a, a version of the problems you'll find on the test, uh, so you get a little exposure to it. Um, please remember that these are uh, algorithm problems, which means you'll have a different set of numbers than I will. So I'm going to show you an example and then you'll want to follow along with your numbers. OK, so I will stop the video and share my screen. And I've already got the uh, first exercise opened up. I'll try to go quickly. Um, all right, so this exam review covers 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. All right, so chapter 6, OK, we have a uh, variable and absorption costing to work with, okay? And I have uh, a spreadsheet also. So let me get things set up here. Okay, so once again, these are brand new problems to me as well. I just happen to have a spreadsheet that I've, and we have worked all of these problems, okay? So we've already worked them once in your coursework. Now it's time to work them for the review and then you can expect one of these um, during the test, okay? You do get points for the review. I think I give you 10 points for completing the review. So highly recommend. Okay, uh, this is once again, variable and absorption costing unit product costs. We produce a handcrafted musical instrument. They're sold for $8.75. That's the selling price. Okay, so all right, we haven't haven't used that yet. Now notice the units produced, right? Units produced eleven thousand. Okay, I would write that down. Units sold eight thousand. So we had beginning inventory, we produced 11,000, we sold 8,000. So that means our ending has 3,000 in it. It's good to evaluate how many's in there, all right? So now here comes the variable cost per unit. So you'll want to put, for absorption, we include direct materials, direct labor, variable manufacturing overhead, and then our fixed manufacturing overhead, which we put here, all right? So our fixed manufacturing overhead is 620,000 divided by the units produced. Okay, the units produced 11,000 Okay, we need to calculate that amount. Okay, so I'm going to do that here. So equals 620,000 divided by 11,000. Okay, so that makes it 564 per unit. Here is our absorption unit product cost. You add these four down. Okay, there it is. Now we're going to do variable cost. Under variable costing, fixed expenses are a period cost. Remember period costs are administration and selling, selling and admin. Okay, so this time, let's just make this equal to 10. Uh, direct and then variable overhead. Okay, so here's the difference. The unit cost for absorption is $1,253 and the unit cost for variable. And the difference is, once again, here is fixed selling and admin. Here's variable selling and admin. Uh, if this was listed as absorption, uh, uh, anything with selling and admin, selling and admin would be period costs. Anything with manufacturing is going to be product costs. 
Okay, if it's very if it's variable costing, then you push the fixed costs down to period costs, right? And then you have your variable costs, so you would move that one up here. Okay, so I believe that's correct. Let's give it a try. Uh oh. Okay, just a second here. Let me see what I have put in incorrectly. Just a moment. Okay, here's what I did wrong. When I put my calculation in, I had one too many zeros. So once again, for fixed manufactured overhead, we take the total fixed costs of 620,000 divide by 11,000 and then you get 56. So I had an extra zero here in my calculation. So that made this one quite a bit more. So now this seems a little better, 745. Let's try this, see if it works. Okay, we got it. Okay, let's go to the next one. This one's gonna be uh, exercise seven, four. Okay, um, this is called second stage allocation. We're gonna have activity-based costing system. This is ABC. So we've got $6. Uh, machine processing is three. Machine setups are 50. Production orders cost us $160 per order. Shipments are $125 per shipment. Product sustaining are 875, okay? So we have uh, a product K425 and a product M67. Okay, so we want to put that above. All right, so how many units were produced? 200 units to 2,000 units, direct labor hours. Okay, 1150 and 40. Machine hours, 2,430. Setups are 21 and, and three. Okay, 21 and three. And this is just the information, okay? Um, so everybody's gonna have different numbers for these. So just pay attention to what your numbers say. All right, so now let me see if I've got any, I need to check my formulas and make sure things are correct. All right, so now here, here's what we have. Here is this activity cost pool, okay? Activity cost pool. So how much total overhead cost would be assigned to K425 and product M67 using activity-based costing? So when I look at the formula here, six hours, all right, times, so support direct labor, $6, sorry, $6 times the hours. Notice these are costs and these are hours down here. So for K425, they had this many direct labor hours, right? So of course, they're gonna have more cost for direct labor. Um, this one had more units uh, produced, okay? Um, so uh, 200 and 200, so here's how you get the number. Uh, support direct labor is $6 times $1,150. Okay, I'm going to go through K425 first. So let's just go ahead and put this in. Okay, machine processing is the machine hours times $3 each. Okay, and remember, here's the rate that we put in from the problem. Okay, so this should be 7,200. Machine setups, we had 21 of those. 21 times 50 should be 21 times 50, 1,050. Okay, uh, production orders. Okay, um, we have $160 production orders. That's the cost per production order times 21. 
So that is $3,360. Okay, and then we have shipments. Uh, each shipment cost us $125. Under K425, we had 42 shipments. So our shipments, right? So once again, we're applying costs based on activity so that those that receive more activity is actually going to receive more cost. So this product sustaining here, uh, 875 times three. Okay, so that is, oops, let me go back over here, is 2625. Okay, so you're going to have to do some math, right? It's this rate times the number of activity. And so, all right, so let me see if I have K425 correct. Okay, it looks okay. All right, so notice this item, M67, they produced a lot more items, but most of the cost is driven by hours, right? Direct labor hours, machine hours, shipments. So we don't do, we may make a lot more, but it doesn't take us very long. So the first one is support direct labor hours, $6 per direct labor hour times 40. Okay, and I'm going to return to the problem. So this is, oh, okay, this is 240 here, 240. For machine processing, it's 30 hours times $3 an hour. Okay, that's 90. Okay, um, machine setups. Okay, setups, there were three. Each setup is worth, it costs us $50, so $150. Production orders. Production orders means that we want their production orders cost them $160 each. And under this product, there were three. So this is 480. Shipments, there were three shipments. Shipments cost $125. So this is 375. And product sustaining. Uh, they split product sustaining, right? So it didn't matter. So it's it's it didn't matter how many they made or how many hours they spent, they split the product sustaining. Okay, so let's see if we got it. Looks like we did. Okay, now we're gonna go to eight, two. Okay, this is the uh, chapter that we did uh, budgets. Okay, remember production budget, units only, no dollars. So there's no dollars here. Okay, and I'm going to make this just a little bit smaller so we can see it a little bit better. And let's put in what they want us to understand. Okay, so it says, okay, ending inventory equals 10% of the following month's unit sales. The inventory at the end of March was $6,800 6, units. Remember, this is the production budget. So there is no dollars at all. Here's the units that we expect. These are the sales that we're gonna have. Okay, so let's start off with the sales. So um, I'm gonna put that in here too. So here we go. Uh, 68,000 is the sales, uh, 80,000, and then 108,000, all right, there's, there's how many units we have budgeted to sell, now we want the desired, okay, um, all right, so now I'm going to go down here, the desired ending inventory, and we've got April, May, and June. So um, April was 68,000, all right? So and we have to remember what it is. Actually, I'm gonna put that above here. April, 68,000, 
80,000, 90,000, and 80,000. Okay, remember this is ending inventory. All right, for each of these. Okay, and we want 10% in, okay, so let's do equals the number of sales for, okay, so the number of sales for April is 68,000. So, okay, uh, all right. So ending inventory, hang on, let's just, let's back up a minute. Let's do ending inventory first. So we want uh, ending, so if this is how much we need for May, we need 10% of May's expected sales sitting in ending inventory at the end of April to get ready to go into May. So we're going to take 80,000 times 10%. Okay, and then, okay, let me try it again. I'm doing this figuring first. Oh, here's my times 10%. So I have to do it in here. That's okay. All right, all right. So, and then this one is going to be 10% of 90,000. And this one's going to be 10% of 80,000, so equals. Okay, so if, so, go back. So um, add units of ending inventory, E74. Okay, this would, should really be here. Oop, all right, so desired ending inventory in May. The desired ending inventory should be 10% of the next month. So there you have it. We'll check out. So let's go ahead and put in 68,000. Oops, one too many zeros. Okay, there we go. Uh, 80,000. June is 108,000. And then when you add those together, there's that. So then what's the first thing we do? We add desired units of ending finished goods inventory. So, um, and then I need to make sure that this is following what we want it to equals that and equals that. All right, so this should be, um, okay, so this should be 8,000. And we're going to put this in as a negative. Let's put it in as a negative so that it calculates okay. Uh, nope, we're adding. My fault, my fault. Take that out. 8,000, so we're adding down. This is 9,000. And then this is 8,000. Now, we want, now be careful. When you get to this line, this number needs to be equal to what you just listed as your ending inventory, 8,000. There it is, okay? <clears throat> now we have our total needs. Now be careful. Less beginning finished goods. So beginning finished goods is March. Okay, so we don't want that. Less beginning finished goods, and I put that here. So they said that March inventory of, was, what be, okay, uh, ending the in, inventory at the end of March, okay? 
So the end of March becomes the beginning of end of March, 6,800. Okay, so that needs to equal 6,800. And we want that as a, as a negative. Okay, and then, okay, so the end, the, the beginning of May is the end of April. So the end of April, okay, let me see if I'm anywhere close. Okay, hang on. Let me, I've got, I've got a little issue here. Just a minute. Okay. Just a minute. I need to get this out of here. So I've been, I've been looking at this probably a little incorrect because I haven't been thinking about it here. And it does take a little bit of thought. So, all right. So what we can say is we want 10% of the next month, 10% of the next month. So 10% of the next month, eight, and then um, 10% of the next month. Mm -hmm. Okay, where to get that? Okay, whoop. See, I didn't put all of my figures in. That's all right. So, Okay, there's that. Okay, and then we want equals, we want this times 10%. So there's 10,800. We're going to add that, right? Mm -hmm. 10,800. And then we needed to know uh, July's because that's going to be the end of June is 8,000. Okay, so let's put 8,000 here. Now let's check it. I think we're okay. Nope. Uh, the end of June, what is the, okay, what's the sale? Oh, 89. Mm -hmm. Well, I haven't done this one very good, guys. Sorry about that. Let's put these in. Okay, so now this should be 8,900. Mm -hmm. And then that is the ending inventory for the quarter is 8,900. Sorry for the confusion. So now we're going to add down, okay? And this adds down for us. So we agree now. Now it comes time to look at deducting less the units of beginning finished goods, okay? So beginning finished goods, the inventory at the end of March was 6,800. So that is April's Okay, so let's see if this subtracts. Yes, so 68, and then this becomes this, okay. And this. I'm having more troubles with my own formula than I am with, all right, so let's see if this is right. Remember the end of March was 6,800, they told us that. The the uh, beginning of May is the end of April, okay? So end of April is not 7,500, it's this one. And then the end of June is this one. The beginning of June is the end of May. I know it's hard, right? So let's see the 8,000. So we're going to subtract. So whatever is the ending finished goods here is the ending of April becomes the beginning of May. The ending of May becomes the beginning of June. Okay. So let's put 8,000 here. I know it's difficult, 10,800 here. And then you have to remember that this is the beginning 
So you need to put in the very first amount. Okay, let's see if we're right. I know this is tough. So here's that desired units of ending finished goods. Once again, we want 10% here of the next month, 10%. And we got the 8,900 based on the fact that they were projecting 89,000 in sales for July. Then the beginning, they told us 6,800. The ending of April becomes the beginning of May. The ending of May becomes the beginning of June. And that's how that goes. Okay. Okay, we're ready for number four now. Number four comes from chapter nine, which is activity variances. Now, I need to go ahead and plug in uh, what we have here, 29,000. That's the budgeted activity. That's the number of meals. Okay, our meals, uh, the revenue, the price of a meal that we charge is $4.30. So revenue is, okay, so we're, I'm just matching this is all I'm doing. 55, 100, 12,300, 32,500, 32, 3,250, 3,400, 2,400, 37, total expenses. Okay, so just to keep pace with what we have. So $1.90, wages and salaries are, okay. So notice you have some that are completely variable like the raw materials. Then you have this one that's mixed. So it's got fixed expenses and a variable piece, okay. Utilities has, is a mixed, so it has a fixed piece, utilities 1800. And five cents a meal. Okay, facility is 3400. So you don't have to redo this. I'm just, I'm just doing it. So 2400 is the Insurance miscellaneous is 800 plus 10 cents a meal. Okay. So expenses. Okay, so this is the planning budget, right? Budgeted activity. There's, there's the net operating income. Okay, the actual, so in July, 30,000 meals were actually served. Okay, so compared to budgeted 29,000, okay, the sales price per, so that's the same sales price, okay, so, and I'm just filling this in, whoops, 57,000, 12,500, um, 3,300, 3,400, 2,400, mm -mm. and 3,800. I think I can copy this here. That's fine. Remember the, there. So remember, we start off with the budget and then we flex it. How did we flex it? Well, they budgeted 29,000 meals selling them, but we sold 30,000, okay? So here's how it works. We're gonna put the flex here in this. So everything you see here gets put in a column, okay? Calculate the company's activity variances for July. So then we put, everything from the budget up here. So we sold 30,000, budgeted for 29,000. Our variance there 
is favorable. So we actually sold more than we planned to. Okay, so let's see, revenue. Now this is the variance. The variance, now you have to be careful. Revenue variances are thought of differently, right? If we sold more, so let's look. We have more revenue in our flexed budget than we do our budgeted budget. Right. The reason is, is we sold a thousand more. So when you sell more, that's a favorable. But now we're going to go through costs. OK, so when we go through costs. Then. Anytime we spend more than we should have. OK, uh, so uh, this is favorable here. There we go. Um, anytime we spend more, like here, we're spending more in the flex than we plan to, that is unfavorable. Okay, so you just have to unfavorable. Okay, so let me get these fixed, but you have to think of, are we, am I looking at costs or revenue, right? So if I spent more, than I planned, this is unfavorable, okay? If I spent more than I planned, it's unfavorable. If I spent more than I planned, and if there is no variance because they're fixed, it's none and none. And so all of this is unfavorable, unfavorable and unfavorable. So we're gonna put these amounts in so the variance of raw materials, I'm going to put the raw material 200, 50, 0, 0, miscellaneous is 100. Total expenses, 2, 2, 5, 0, okay, uh, 20, 50. And I want to say unfavorable for most of all of this. So we spent more than we planned to, even though we sold more than we planned to. So this is none, none, unfavorable. We spent more in wages, unfavorable. We spent more in raw materials than we planned, unfavorable, but we sold more than we had planned. So there we have it. Okay, hold on just a minute. My fault, let's go down to, yeah. So let's go down here. Sorry, I missed it. Net operating, I need to pay attention like I was talking about revenue where we have more than we planned. So favorable like revenue. Okay, so sorry about that. I missed that one. Oh, and it's 4,300. We sold a thousand more. So be careful. You got to put dollars. Sorry about that. Okay, got to put dollars. And then that becomes favorable down there. Boy, I didn't do very good with this one. Okay. All right. So once again, be careful. I know I didn't, I wasn't. Let's go to the last one now. This is called variable overhead variances. Now, we had materials variances, we had labor variances, but I went ahead and went with overhead variances. So let's just walk this through, okay? Um, we're gonna use this three-prong approach. So it's actual quantity, and in this case, it's actual hours because they base their, over, they base their overhead on direct labor hours. So Logistics Solutions maintains warehouses that stock items carried by its dot-com clients. When a client receives an order from a customer, the order is forwarded to Logistics Solution, which pulls the item from the storage, packs it, and ships it to the customer. The company uses a predetermined variable overhead rate based on direct labor hours. Most of the time, your overhead, your variable overhead is based on direct labor hours, because that's what's driving the cost. In the most recent month, here comes the actuals. 125,000 items were shipped, 
So I went ahead and listed what the actual things happened. They shipped 125,000 items. They had 4,400 4, direct labor hours. And they had total variable overhead costs of $12,540. Okay. Then here's the standard. The standard are the budgets. I always list those first so that I can, you know, kind of get an idea. Here's what, here's what's supposed to happen. And here's what happened. So based on their standards or their budget for every direct labor hour, which is to fulfill an order of one item, um, 0.04 goes to overhead, okay? And then the rate of overhead, they gave that to us. That's our standard rate, $2.90. So forever, every, so for every, let's see if I can do it here, for every hour, so it should only take 0.04 direct labor hour to move one order, okay? So here's what I took. If, if we actually shipped 125,000 items, here's where you have to use the actual. Okay, even though that's up there in the standards, actual items shipped. So sometimes this is the hardest part. You have to use actual items shipped. So if you take 125,000 hours times 0.04, right? You get 5,000 hours, okay? 5,000 hours, that becomes your standard hours. So standard quantity of labor hours allowed, 5,000. So that's that one. Okay. And then the next one, standard variable overhead cost allowed. So here is that one. Okay. So how did you get that? What you do is we have a standard hours okay so let me put h quantity in hours means the same thing price and rate means the same thing but i'm trying to use the the right le uh, initials so it's okay price and rate but this is overhead and it's based on direct labor hours and based on an overhead rate that's why we're using r instead of price okay so if you take our standard hours, which we agreed is 5,000, okay? Here's our actual rate. Uh, oop, I missed that up. This is our actual rate. And these are our actual hours. So you say, where'd you get those? Actual hours were given to us. Our actual rate is the total divided by our actual hours. So Here's what we know. They expected to use 5,000 hours to ship 125,000 items. They only used 4,400 items, hours, okay? They only used 4,400 hours when they were expected to use 5,000. So this is a good thing. That means we're being more efficient, right? We're being more efficient. And then here is the standard rate up here they calculated a standard rate of two dollars and ninety cents per direct labor hour but we came in under that for two dollars and 85 cents so we are doing better with efficiency and better with rate so when it's all said and done you should expect that the variances will all be favorable right so we put in AR times AH. I'm just getting that from up here. AR or AH times AR, AH times, okay, so let me follow what they've got up there. AH times AR, AH times SR, 
okay? And then SH times SR. Okay, let's see if that's right. Yeah, so substitute R for rate or price, and Q is quantity, and we say hours. So actual, actual. So 4,400 times $2.85 gives us an actual amount of 12,540. That's these are costs now. That's quite a bit better than clear over here, right? But let's work our way through these. So we just solved for this one. So the standard variable overhead cost allowed, they said it ought to take 5,000 hours with a rate of $2.90. So they think it should be $14,500 for the standard cost. But we came in under that in two ways. We came in better at our rate and we came in better by not using so many hours. So our, our rate was better and our efficiency was better, okay? So then it says, what's the variable spending variance? Well, that's this one, okay? So that's the difference between this number and this number. And remember, if it's a negative when we do these, then it's favorable because we're talking about expenses, okay? So that's this, this number here is, okay, um, I'll just put it 12,540 minus 14,000, 14, oops, 14,500. Okay, that's that, okay? And then they want to, they want the rate variance and then they want the efficiency variance. A lot of times you find this, these two and then this one, but that's not what they wanted. So um, this one is not as big. So it's more favorable over here that we use quite a few less hours, right? 600 less hours. And the difference between our rates are just a dime. So each, each the, the rate is better and efficiency, we're doing better with the hours it took us to do something. Okay, so then this one is 12,540 minus 12,760. Okay, and then this one's favorable also. We spent 12,760. Always compare left to right. That will help. So there it is, okay? So I think we're correct. Maybe. All right, so that's it for the five problems that you will have on your exam two. Um, be ready. Um, uh, there'll be some multiple cho choice questions and then these five problems from chapters uh, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Okay, so thank you very much. I'll stop my share and say goodbye. Keep up the hard work. We're getting close.